1937, early in the summer of 1937 at the ATC conference, Edward Ballard, who was a Park Service employee, ANC member, with Avery's backing, introduced a resolution that we should have basically a management zone around the trail, a mile on either side. It was something he didn't think they needed legislation for. It would be sort of voluntary zoning along the trail, not acquisition. A lot of states got on board, but nothing really happened for a lot of reasons. We were edging up to the war. The trail was broken by a hurricane in 1938. Avery was in New York. Things just didn't happen through the 40s into the 50s, and it wasn't really until 1961 when Stan Murray became chairman of ATC, and he and others got together in Maine and plotted a strategy to build up ATC's political clout and also get a group together to start working on Congress and the agencies. Legislation was introduced, got nowhere, just like it had gotten nowhere in the 40s when an ATC board member was in Congress and he introduced it. But he kept trying, the Senate was interested, but then the White House, for reasons that aren't really clear, really got interested and said, let's have a national system of trails, let's copy that watch and trail all over the country. They came up with plans that ATC people were working on all along, and it included acquisition. And then all of a sudden, in the early summer of 1968, hearings were held in the House and Senate. The bill got passed out. It was signed in October of 1968 with the idea that the states would take the lead in acquisition with some backing of the Forest Service and the National Park Service. And that's where it stood at the end of 1968. New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and to some extent Virginia got on board, but otherwise very little happened in terms of actual acquisition. And then people started getting restless by the early 70s. People like Ed Garvey and others at PATC and ATC board. So they basically started raising the rockets in the, the 1975 ATC conference. It was pretty much all devoted, how do we get this thing moving? How do we get this going? 77 the same way, and called up federal officials to say, oh, why aren't you doing more? And that was really the spur for the 1978 amendments to say, no, states don't have the lead anymore, Park Service has the lead, we'll create this office, and here's a sum of money, you know, $90 million basically, to buy this land, and that's how we're going to protect the trail. And you will do this, you will do it in concert with ATC, you will have a partnership there between the two of you, and it will get done. And this was all framed with ATC backing, working on the amendments, and those were signed by President Carter in 1978. This business of building relationships and earning trust, of course, goes far beyond just the one-on-one -on -one relationship between a negotiator and a, and a landowner. That, when I finally moved to Milwaukee in about 1980 and began to get involved with the Appalachian Trail, learning who these folks are and can, you know, can we trust each other and, and spending time together and doing things together really help accomplish a lot of things that we could not have done on our own. Prior to 78, uh, the Forest Service was involved in acquiring a number of narrow rights of ways but things took a real change about 1980. When the Reagan administration came in, they cut our budgets, so we had about just about a third of the staff we had prior to 1980. They also said that we weren't to be acquiring any more land and came up with the asset management program where we were supposed to be disposing of a lot of this public land. That's when the land trust began to play a much bigger role. And uh, with congressional support, we actually did acquire uh, a whole lot of land during those uh, eight years. The Land Trust, the Appalachian Trail Conference, all kinds of folks were, were very key in making that happen. Uh, and along the way, we've created a publicly owned greenway that's... What made this phase unique was the organic culmination of countless individuals, private organizations, and state and federal agencies. Armed with a shared vision, but lacking a clear plan, these pioneers developed a methodology and their devotion carried them forward. So uh, it provides them uh, effective... Uh... So I joined the Appalachian Trail Project in 1979 on behalf of the National Park Service. 
uh, shortly after the 1978 amendments were passed to the National Trail System Act, and the Park Service really geared up for this land acquisition program. One of the uh, legislative mandates in the 1978 amendments to the Trails Act directed the, the Park Service to get the job done in three years. That would have been 1981, we should have been done, but it was just too big a job to get done in that short amount of time. So we steadily plugged along and Congress continued to do their part and appropriate funding. I think without question, the most complex land protection effort ever undertaken by the National Park Service. And it, it's fair to say that everybody didn't know what they were doing when we started out. I don't think anybody really grasped the, the hugeness and the complexity of this project. At this point, the, the National Park Service has acquired some 3,000 individual tracts of land from Maine down through Virginia. Uh, protecting over 110,000 acres of land as part of the corridor. The Forest Service had a similar program within the boundaries of the National Forest. And of course the club volunteers up and down the trail and, and ATC staff were instrumental and key partners in planning and designing the corridor. As were the communities and the landowners themselves. The, the trail was unique in that it did not have a legislative boundary. So there was a lot of latitude to design a corridor that would both protect the trail and still be compatible with landowner interests. We knew from the outset that we couldn't afford to have 2,000 miles of angry, hostile neighboring landowners. So it was a gentle land acquisition program, if you will. And um, it's, uh, it's really extraordinary uh, what has been accomplished. The trail has gone through many interesting eras, but certainly the land protection era that physically established the, the land base for the trail was certainly an exciting one to be part of. And the way I feel about it is I just feel lucky. I feel like I got to do this. And how, how cool is that? How lucky am I uh, to leave this kind of legacy behind?